Thank you so much. So uh, you, um, while going through data-driven uh, agronomy, uh, it, it was mentioned that uh, this data-driven agronomy is used uh, uh, to the use of digital technology and big data to break the yield gap um, in agriculture, particularly in developing countries. How do you do that? Or how is this being achieved with uh, your community of practice? I mean, with the community of practice, we, we're working with a, with a wide range of, of partners, but I can give you just one example. Like, uh, for example, working with, with, with our colleagues in, in Mexico. So they do basically, it's another center, another CGI center called CIMIT. Uh, they do have a lot of data. They've been collecting data, observational data, right? Like no control, experiment, field, field trials, experimentation data, no? like observational data from farmer's fields on farm information, on crop management. So they also have access to climate weather or climate information, soil information. So basically what we've been doing with them is like uh, merging all those sources of information, mining such data in such a way that we can find what are the most uh, uh, limiting factors for specific regions in specific moments of time, right? So to do that, we used a, a wide range of approaches. Uh, like uh, most of the times, uh, machine learning uh, techniques, but also, you know, sometimes we also use uh, traditional statistics. It's like, you know, I did my PhD working on, on artificial intelligence, but sometimes it's kind of, you know, sometimes you, it's not necessarily that you have to go through machine learning because you think that the problem is complex. I mean, this is what is happening right now. Like people just, you know, you, you should think that there are also some cases where you, with, with some, I don't know, like uh, factorial analysis can solve <laughs> some problems that you, you I mean, you, you, we, just, we just don't jump into uh, machine learning complex models because, because we think that the problem is very complex. So it's really data mining exercise. So that's, that's how we've been doing that, that from the analytical point of view. But by doing that, we realize that it's not only the analytics, it's also how you develop tools to integrate different sources of information, how you interpret the data, I mean, we can do, we can be good at, 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 at crunching data, analyzing data, but the interpretation is key. Interpretation is with, with, with the people that they really know the problem, right? The technical, the, all, all of them. And at the end, how you present that information in a format that can be, could be understandable. So it's a whole approach. And this is the, and, and then how that pass on to technicians. And that's the way how we've been working in terms of reduce the yield gap. I think you muted. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I also want to ask, as a young agronomist or youth in agriculture, how can they key into this trend, you know, this new uh, research uh, development in big data and in digital technology? How can we, as youth in agriculture, see agronomists come in and, and contribute in, in, in this? Guys, I mean, the, the tools that we have available right now for you in particular is like uh, things that I dreamt when I was working as extension officer. I always, you know, I, 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 I was dreaming about why not? I mean, when I was recommended that variety that should be, shouldn't be grown in that place, I was like, come on, we, we should have something that can tell us uh, this is my site, this, uh, my GPA's coordinates. We know that in that particular place, in historically, that crop, that variety performed decently. So that should be the variety that should be grown there according to socioeconomic and geogram uh, biophysical conditions. And I don't know, why not to link that to markets, right? And, and to, to, as like you were saying, uh, the pressure of pests and diseases. I mean, those are things that are possible right now. I mean, they, they probably were considered science fiction when I was in the field 20 years ago. But that is possible right now. I mean, you have so many technologies at, at your disposal to do that. Uh, augmented reality. Uh, there's so many tools. And I think you, they are the ones that can use, you know, those tools to make that possible. It's just that the way how we've been trained in agronomy right now, in our conditions, at least I can tell you about Latin America, we're probably not addressing those, addressing those problems in, the, in our schools, you know. We're still not seeing beyond craft productivity sometimes. 
uh, we're still, you know, not very familiar with analytics and with digital. And I think you are. I mean, I, 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 I want, I, I sometimes I, I make this joke that uh, unfortunately, young researchers working in agriculture, extension officers, they're probably more familiar with Instagram than with histograms. <laughs> So that's that's something that we should I mean we should address that right do you agree I totally agree with you great <laughs> yeah that, that's the thing I mean we, we have time to, to work on that and and you know I think I, I will dedicate part of my professional life to do that too so that that means you you you're advising that uh youth can start from the basis of of this with uh, learning data science um artificial intelligence to be able to really be a player in, 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 in this field? I mean, not necessarily. It's like, you know, I remember early in the, early the days when we were talking about a data scientist, you know, that should be a person that you know about so many things. And at the end, we realized that it was more, more like a multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary framework. So, you know, we cannot pretend that we will have, you know, super, the super girl or super, super boy extension officer. <laughs> But it probably, you know, should be like how to work more in a multidisciplinary uh, framework. So, yeah, probably not an expert on artificial intelligence, but at least to understand a bit how it works, right? How to interpret data. I mean, we, I mean, now we, we're going to be, we, 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 we probably will get as extension officers a lot of information. I mean, we should be able at least to understand what information is telling us to interpret some graphs, some, you know, infographs and all the stuff to use it in order to, to give more uh, responsible recommendations to farmers, to, to see beyond uh, crop productivity and, and to understand more the, the value chain, for example. That will be, you know, what I, what I advise to, to the new generation of, of extension officers. Thank you very much. I also like to ask, uh, in your community of practice, which is data-driven agronomy, how, how can youth, you know, how can we engage in this community of practice? Engage, learn, practice, and collaborate. How can we engage? This? Yeah, I mean, this, um, I can share you with you the link. I mean, if you go to, to the website, Data Doing Agronomy, Big Data Platform, you will see how to join the, the community and to, you know, like um, um, get news about the community of practice, about what we're doing, about the topics that we're discussing, for, for example, this year, we dedicated uh, to a topic were called scaling. And it was because last year in the last, uh, in the previous convention, uh, we, we were talking about digital extension services. And, and we realized that one of the bottlenecks that we had was actually how to scale up uh, those initiatives. So this year we, we, we organized uh, so far four webinars, still one missing on, on, on scaling. The next year we will we will discuss about uh, digital extension. Sorry, the extension officer, of, the extension agent of the future. So you will see uh, you know a series of webinars on that topic. Uh, I don't know, uh, Femi, if you if you've seen on on Cuba the discussions around that topic in the in the platform. They were amazing. I mean, we yes. had probably like fifteen topics around it. We just gave to the community of practice ideas on the way how we should approach the topic for the next year. You will help a lot if you can bring those ideas to the community of practice to let us know, to say, hey, why don't you explore, I don't know, like um, how educational institutions should work on that too, right? For example, just one, one, one example of how uh, we can uh, develop partnerships with key actors on, on that, right? You, if you can help us with that, that would be great. That's the idea to, to build this as a collective um, and with you guys. Thank you so very much. I really appreciate your responses.